Welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast, episode 23, Newton OS versus Apple Touch OS. Well, welcome, and this is the iPad Possibilities Podcast. I'm Tim, and I'm your host of this show, and for this studio show this week, I'm going to do a little bit of recapping from our history. I'm going to be taking a look at the Newton operating system and the devices that that operating system ran on. So right now we've got the Apple Touch operating system which runs on the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and now the iPad. Well, the Newton operating system was Apple's first mobile operating system and it was designed for PDAs, so the message pad and what they called the Newton eMate 300 of little PDA laptop designed for students. So we'll be getting into all of that today with this episode of the iPad Possibilities Podcast. Before we get this episode rolling, I'd like to first take a moment to thank our sponsors, the iPhone iPad developers of the application It's On My Way. The It's On My Way app is available in the App Store for $2.99. And with that app, you can quickly plan out your routes and just simply plan out how you're going to get from point A to point B to point C and back again. So It's On My Way is on the App Store for $2.99. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this episode of the iPad Possibilities Podcast. Well, before we get started on the Newton and Apple Touch operating system episode, I'd like to remind everyone about an announcement I made on the live show, the last episode, about next week's live show. We do the live shows every Sunday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're going to have a very special episode this upcoming Sunday with Ken Case. He is the founder and CEO of the Omni Group. The Omni Group is one of the premier Mac developers uh, and also now on the iPhone and iPod and the iPad. And they're coming to the iPad in a big, big way. They are bringing their entire productivity suite, their five set of applications to the iPad. And they've already started to do that with Omni Graphle and Omni Graph Sketcher. And they're working on their remaining three so omni outliner omni focus and omni plan and all of those are coming to the ipad very soon here and we're going to be talking with ken case on april 18th that's this upcoming sunday night at 9 30 and i'd love if everyone could join us you just go to the possibilities network.com and go to the ipad live page there and you can join in the chat ask questions for ken as we get rolling with the omni group and discussing what they see in the iPad, what possibilities and potential they see coming about and truly making this device a much more productive machine, a much more useful machine. And I'm very excited. uh, They're a software company that I've long admired how they've written their software, the interface and all of those things. I've been playing around with Omni Graph, well, Omni Graph Sketcher this week, and I am blown away by what they've been able to do in these two short months. And I've been a longtime user of Omni Focus. I relied on every day with my iPhone and Mac. So I just wanted to make that announcement, and I'd love if everyone could join us this Sunday night with the iPad Possibilities Podcast, the live show. So now on to the main content of the show, and that we're is today we're going to be discussing the Newton operating system and how it relates to where we've gone now with Apple's operating system. Now the Newton operating system was around from 1993 to 1997. It was the operating system that Apple used on their PDAs. Apple invented the PDA market with the message pad and later brought that to the eMate 300. And I actually have both of those with me right now. I've got the eMate 300 and the Newton message pad 2100 sitting right next to me to do some comparisons of the devices with what we have now, the iPhone and the iPod Touch and the iPad. So the Newton, it made it to 2.1 as its last release. And it's kind of interesting how long it took them to get to 2.1, whereas within four years, we're now at OS 4 with the iPhone. And over a course of five years, they only made it to 2.1. So it is kind of interesting the different 
breed of Apple that was around back then, how they didn't update as quickly. Now, the Newton has a pretty large gathering still to this day. I'm on the mailing list, the Newton Talk mailing list, and it's great fun just learning about this old device that for many people is still a device they use to this day. Many people love, as do I, the elegance of the operating system. And I'm going to play, for instance, just the nice little things they put into it just regarding the user interface and not even that just the experience so i'm going to play for you the sound you get when you interact with the newton so here we go this is just what you hear as you play with the newton So as you can hear, the Newton, it's a melodic device. It's kind of interesting how they did this. They have the same, it seems like a pentatonic scale or something like that, that you actually hear as you interact throughout the entire uh, feature set of the Newton operating system. And the part that I love the best about the Newton, and what it's what made me get the Newton originally, I actually picked those up after uh, during the winter, right before the iPad came out. Uh, December of 2009, I picked those up. And what really appealed to me was the handwriting recognition. Originally, it was not the best, but with this last version, 2.1, they really nailed the handwriting recognition and made it really useful. It recognizes my handwriting really well and translates it, and it becomes this perfect little digital notebook that you can just take everywhere and start jotting down your notes and it is a great little device to do simply that. Now, the Newton has many features that the iPad and the iPhone still don't have to this day. They've got some great abilities, such as you were able to print documents back then. You are actually able to print documents hooked up to a printer via, I think, a cable is how they did it. You are able to file documents away and access those from different applications which is something we're still lacking today, which I think they'll fix pretty soon. You were able to rotate the screen just as you could with the iPad today. The iPhone can't do that, but the Newton certainly could. You could also do just some... Their interface was what really drew me to it. I've got an application called uh, Notepad. Actually, it's not called Notepad. Let me pull it up here it's called write pad now i've got that on my ipad and my iphone and they try to mimic the handwriting recognition and what the newton really did and they do it pretty well with the handwriting part but the interface of interacting with your text is nothing like what the newton was you're able to scribble out your text and just instantly vanish you're able to do really advanced copy and pasting through that operating system that it took apple a while to figure out how to do so the Newton was very advanced for its time. It was, uh, it was a shame that it got let go because I would have loved to see how far it could have advanced if Apple stayed the course with the Newton. Of course, I don't really mourn that fact that Steve Jobs killed it when he returned because now we have this new Apple Touch OS, which is advancing at a much quicker rate than the Newton ever did. And it brings some things that the Newton just simply couldn't do, partly because the technology wasn't there and partly because the operating system wasn't based on the Mac, which we now have with this Apple Touch OS. So I've got both of them right here, and physically, um, they're quite heavy. The uh, Newton E-Mate, let me pull up the specs here so I actually get a... Uh, more accurate reading on how heavy these things are. But I know, for instance, that the Newton Message Pad is three pounds. It is twice the weight of the iPad. And it's uh, bulkier. It's got uh, the iPhone. The screen resolution is actually kind of interesting because the iPhone screen resolution is the same as this much larger screen on the latest Message Pad. And it's the same as with the E-Mate. So I'm pulling up a Mac tracker here to figure all this out here. And I love this application. It basically tells you different uh, specs of different uh, Apple devices through the ages. And let me pull up the Newton Message Pad 2100 to figure out the weight of the actual device. 
Ian's still searching here, but uh, just physically, they're they're both done in a green kind of uh, plastic. Very durable. You could actually, they actually tested this out with the E-Mate, where you can actually drop it on concrete and really do some big damage to it, but it wouldn't get broken. It wouldn't damage. The E-Mate was built like a tank. It literally had a durability factor that nothing really matches to this day, and that's kind of interesting to me that they were able to build this tank that really you couldn't break, you couldn't do anything bad with it. It was designed for children actually to be able to interact with it. So I did get the weight wrong. It is 1.4 pounds, the Newton the message pad 2100. So it's kind of similar to the iPad. And then the Newton E-Mate is as I said, uh, it's, it's actually four pounds. So it's actually a pound heavier than the MacBook Air, but it's uh, it's a nice form factor. I, I really, that's something I really admired about the Newton devices that they they built them well. They built them in a very apple way, if that makes sense. So they both, uh, I guess the failings of it mainly were price. Both of them, Sold at around a thousand bucks a piece, uh, either for the E-Mate or the Message Pad. They they were around that price. The E-Mate was a little bit lower, and they were only sold for schools for about a year. And I think the price really killed it because, I mean, you could you couldn't get a computer at that price, but the price was very high for what it did. It was your personal organizer, your personal your personal basically your Palm Pilot before those came out. They really paved the way for Palm to create what they did. And what you could do with it, as far as applications, it had a very pretty active developer community. They had developer conferences back in the day for the Newton, and some pretty advanced apps were written. They had music notation apps. They had all sorts of different things. They had, you know, an Adobe-type Photoshop type app, but they were, I mean, as as advanced as they could with the black and white screen. Now, one of the cool things, and the one of the cool things that makes the Newton still a viable device today is the batteries. They actually use double A's to charge these little guys. So both my E-Mate and my Message Pad now just run off double A's, and because the battery consumption is so low with these devices. They last forever. You can run them for 24 hours straight, no problems. And they have incredible standby time. These guys will stand by for months on end without needing to be recharged because of this. And that's one killer feature. You can always depend on it. It's a very dependable device, just as the Apple iPad is. And uh, it is interesting as people comment about, upon the name originally when they heard iPad, it made perfect sense if you're coming from the Newton background of the message pad. The Apple transitioned from this more singular device of the message pad to this simply called iPad, which is transformative to anything that the application designed with the name of the message pad. It was really designed as a single purpose device to take messages and take notes during class or during meetings and really a device that's just with you at all times to take messages and that's what it's for. But the iPad is Apple's new pad that has endless potential, not endless opportunities to what you could do with it. And I actually have been still using the message pad to this day, taking notes. I've been trying to transition from that to other apps like WritePad, they can do similar functionality, but the Newton, and it's got a strange appeal. It's heavier, it's bulkier, It's that's all it does, but I still enjoy the experience of using it nevertheless. It's, it's such an enjoyable experience, and because the iPad is also just as enjoyable, it will soon probably just be sitting on my shelf as a nice little nod to where we came from with the Newton devices. Now, one interesting concept I was thinking about is the E-Mate. Now, the E-Mate, for those that don't know, I've kind of hinted at this, but it is the laptop done uh, PDA. So what they did, they took the Newton operating system, which is a PDA-based operating system, 
and they put that on this laptop type, type device. It was really the first netbook, if you can think of it like that. The first really underpowered little, you take it anywhere you want, it can't get destroyed, can't get damaged, because it's built like a tank. And it was the first little laptop like this. And the coolest thing for me is it becomes really an endless, uh, a timeless device where it can become just your electronic typewriter where everything else gets out of the way except the content. And that's kind of an interesting concept to me. It's curious to see if Apple would ever go down that road again, right? They had that form factor of taking that mobile operating system of the Newton and putting it in a laptop form. Now, I'm kind of curious to see what if the Apple Touch OS, the operating system that runs on the iPad, the iPhone, and the iPod Touch, what if they put that in a laptop form factor? Would they ever do that? What would you think about the possibilities there? Do you think that one day the MacBook Air will be running a more advanced version of the Apple Touch OS, right? Where... It's a larger screen. You're able to interact it merely by touch and the keyboard, and that gets rid of the trackpad area to make it even sleeker, even smaller. Do you see that as a possibility for the future? Will the Apple Touch OS begin to merge with the Mac, and will some laptops start running this instead or have the option to? I think that's a possibility. I think in 10 years, we may see that. We may begin to see the e-mate be resurrected back into life with this new operating system that Apple started to develop, and it's now been four years and it's advanced quite a long ways. I think that it has the possibilities of doing that. Now, one of the cool things about the e-mate is the ability to simply start typing and just getting rid of the content from the screen and I experienced the same sensation, the same experience on the iPad the other day as I was writing my paper in pages. I had the Bluetooth keyboard hooked up to it and that same experience of getting rid of everything except the content, except the experience of writing disappeared as you become as that application takes over the device. And it was interesting to see that happen because I remember the first time I did that with the e-mate and it was a very personal experience, a very intimate experience, just typing and nothing else was there. You didn't have access to the internet even though you could put Wi-Fi cards in there, but it was that intimate experience that you just don't get with most devices these days. And it's interesting how similar the experience is between the message pad and the e-mate because uh, the message pad and the e-mate and the iPad. It, it seems that experience as the iPad is a more advanced version of that Newton experience that we once had. It, it seems this would have been the natural progression Apple would have done if they had carried out the Newton operating system. Because the iPad experience is, it makes me feel like I'm working on an, a Newton, and just a much more advanced Newton, right? The experience of it, the sensation of using it. That's the biggest thing I try to let people be aware of when I, it's hard to describe the iPad in terms of specs, in terms of what you can do with it. And in terms like that, it's you can't really explain the iPad to people. You simply have to give them one to, to let them experience the ex, experience the experience of interacting with it. Right? There's nothing like touching and interacting with the iPad because it really is that blank slate that can and eventually will do everything that you need to do with a blank slate. It becomes whatever that application wants it to. And that's a true little revelation that most people don't have for a while that this is a blank piece of glass a 10-inch slate, a 10-inch pad that really can do anything. So I I thought this episode would be fun to do as I got really into Newtons a few months back, way before uh, the iPad came out, 
And I, I had heard hints that the iPad was probably coming out, that there'd be some little device from Apple coming out. I had no idea I'd be doing a show on this at all. And I just got enamored with this 10-year-old technology called the Newton. And it, it they're phenomenal devices. I actually kind of encourage people to pick them up to just experience what the Newton was all about. They can be had for less than $100. I got my e-mate for $80 because I got it future-proofed. The hinges were kind of weak on the original e-mate. So someone actually has a business of uh, making e-mates that are – a resilient to the future, replacing batteries with double A compatible batteries and things like that. And then I picked up the 2100 for about 60 bucks. So you can get these for not much. And I'll be actually kind of curious to see if the Einstein emulator makes its way to the iPad because there is an emulator and I'd love to see what they could do as far as creating that on the iPad because I'd love to start using the text recognition of the Newton on the iPad. I think that'd be a cool use case. I think that would be an exciting way to see the Newton still live in current Apple hardware. So let me know what you guys think of my thoughts on the Newton and the iPad. Do you see this as the natural progression of where Apple would have been going anyways and that they just took a break from that and started back up with the iPhone, and that's where it would have gone anyways? Or do you think the Newton, if it had been its own, if it had been continued, would it have gone someplace else? Would it have created a new set of devices that we couldn't even have imagined today? What do you think? Send me your feedback at iPadPossibilities at gmail.com and send in your voice comments to 209-542-iPad. I'd love to hear what you think about this. And if you have a Newton, if you have an email to message pad, what do you think about them? Do you still use them to this day? Uh, let me hear your feedback on this. I know this episode is kind of out of the ordinary, but I wanted to see uh, and kind of talk about the potential and possibilities of the Newton and where it's all come from, kind of the history of the iPad. Most people don't really realize that the Newton was there. It was the first really PDA ever in this world that Apple created that. And the naming message pad is kind of cool because that's where the iPad comes from, right? Apple likes this name pad. Uh, Evidently, they used it in the Newton and they now use it in the Apple Touch OS. So just let me know what you guys think about these thoughts as far as Apple and their advancement with mobile devices and where else do you think they could have gone if they just continued on with the Newton? Would the iPhone exist today as we know it or would it be something else? So let me know what you think. I I don't want to go on with this topic too long because it is sort of a niche topic. It is uh, not the most mainstream topic, but I thought it would be important to cover fairly early on before we get too enamored with all of these iPad topics that will come up and we do have a bunch of other shows planned a bunch of different interviews lined up already with other ipad developers i mentioned in the beginning of the show ken case the omni group will be on sunday night but i want to let you know there will be a couple uh two more interviews at least i have lined up with some very premier very Uh, excellent iPad developers and I'm very excited to talk with those developers and share those interviews with you and we've got some great shows lined up and I thought for this studio show this week that I'd spend about 20 minutes and simply talk about the Newton and kind of comparing that with the Apple Touch OS and uh, if you'd like to support the show uh, there's a couple different ways you can do that First off, you can do that by simply subscribing in iTunes. The second way is simply leave a review in iTunes. Those help every bit along the way. They help uh, other people see the show, and it brings a vil- visibility up of it up in the iTunes store. A couple other ways you can support the show is, first off, uh, you can purchase the iPad Possibly's podcast app found in the App Store for $2.99. And with that application, you will get the shows 24 hours in advance. So we'll get the shows Monday, Wednesday, and Friday instead of Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And we'll start adding some extra bonus episodes as well with the application. And we'll be doing some couple different things with the application. So it's an app store now for $2.99. 
And you can also donate to the show. Just go to the postleysnetwork.com, go to the iPad page, scroll down, and you'll find uh, Help Tim Buy an iPad. And those donations go directly to me to help me buy things t- like applications and things like that to help uh, me cover some different topics that I would not have been able to otherwise. So you can donate there. And as always, please just send your feedback and questions to iPadPossibilities at gmail.com and 209-542-iPad. And we will speak again this weekend with Ken Case of the Omni Group. And stay tuned for my weekly thoughts on Friday or Saturday. Until then, this is Tim Chatton of the iPad Possibilities Podcast.